one more time. Lord, we thank you now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, for we know it's not by might nor power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Give me the word today that will bring us revelation knowledge from what you have told us to do. In Jesus' name, we pray your blood over this now. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give God one praise. Turn to the book of James. That's right after Hebrews. If you find Revelation and turn back about probably 30 or 35 pages, you'll probably find it. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse number 19. It says, You believe that God is one, you do well. But the demons also believe too. Now what does that say right there? It says right there that faith by itself won't, won't bring you a miracle. Because the devil knows all about God and has faith in God. All right? Look at verse 20. But you are willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, fellow that faith without works is useless or faith without works is dead. Go to verse number 24. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Verse 26, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. I've entitled today's message, Work That Thing. Go ahead and tell somebody, Work That Thing. We hear a lot of messages today about faith. Yeah, and yes, faith is good, and without faith it's impossible to please God, but faith by itself won't do you any good until you act upon it or do something with the faith that you have. The problem that many Christians have is that they don't act upon their faith. They can have faith in the Lord, but if you don't know how to activate your faith, it won't do you any good. There are many Christians today that have genuine faith in the Lord. They believe that God can do anything but they don't know how to use their faith for, in order to see miracles take place. They don't know how to put their faith into action. Some people think that all they need is more faith. They think that all they need to do is believe in the Lord. But the Bible says that even demons believe in the Lord. So faith is not enough. I have a computer at home on my desk. This computer is very powerful. It will do awesome things. But until a few months ago, I didn't know how to even turn the thing on. I didn't know how to activate it. I didn't know how to use it properly. And now when I get stuck, i got to call my wife to come and fix it for me or help me out. How many know what I'm talking about? But I didn't know how to work the computer. And God is very much the same way. He's awesome. He is all-powerful. There's nothing too hard for Him. He is the God that hung this world on nothing. He created man out of the dust of the earth. Look at somebody and say, you're nothing but a dirt bag anyway. He says, all things were created by him and for him. And apart from him, nothing has been created. He is all powerful. But if you don't know how to tap into his power, it won't do you any good. If you don't know how to give and also receive, it won't do you any good. I was at home the other day and somebody called and wanted to send me a fax on my computer. There were certain things that you've got to do to receive a fax. Well, I didn't know what that was. And so I couldn't receive it because I didn't know how to work it. You see, just because you're saved doesn't mean you're going to receive a miracle. Just because you're walking with the Lord doesn't mean you know how to activate your faith. Help me in here, somebody. See, it's just like my computer. It can be all-powerful. It can do all kinds of things, be all-knowing. But if you don't know how to work it, it won't do you any good. The same thing is true in regards to your faith in the Lord. You can be saved and have tremendous faith in Him. But if you don't know how to work your faith, you can die at an early age. You can have the faith and never own your own home. You can have faith and never receive a healing miracle. Am I right about it in here? In fact, you can pay your tithes and go to church three times a week and still be broke if you don't know how to work that thing. You can believe that Jesus can do anything, but if you don't know how to work it, you'll never receive what he has. Does anybody know what I'm preaching in here? Oh, I hope you hear me in here today. Let me say it another way. If you don't know how to put action with your faith, nothing is going to happen. You can feel called to write songs, but if you don't write some songs, it won't do you any good. Come on, somebody. If you don't learn how to work that thing, nothing's going to change. Tell somebody, work that thing. See, 
faith is not the issue. The Bible says that every man has been given a measure of faith. In other words, if you are born again, you have all the faith you need to receive a miracle from the Lord. Quit trying to have faith and learn how to use the faith that you have and work that thing. Some people are trying to have faith for the miracle. But Jesus said you only need to have faith of a mustard seed. That's a real small amount of faith. So faith by itself is not enough. You've got to know how to work it. Jesus said he who hears the words of mine and does them shall be compared to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. In other words, it's not good enough to hear the word of God. You've got to put action with what you hear. When you hear the word about tithes and offerings, you've got to act upon that word. If you want something you never had, you've got to do something that you've never done. Anytime you give finances to the Lord, what you are really doing is putting action with your faith. Anytime you don't give, you're not putting action with it. See, the tithe rebukes the devourer, but the offerings bring, brings in a harvest. And if you can bring God what is his and you know how to work that thing, it's only a matter of time until God helps you. You got to work it. And I'll be honest and tell you that the truth is I've never had giant faith to do anything that we've done here. But at least I had the sense to stand on the Word of God and to build by faith. At least I had the sense to work that thing. Peter was in the boat. And he was hearing the Word of the Lord. And how many of you know that you can be going along in life and hear the word of the Lord. And God says, I want you to step out and do something for me. But I want you to know you can be sailing along in life. But if you don't get out of the boat. You can have all kinds of faith. But you've got to get out of the boat. And you've got to begin to walk in places you've never walked before. You've got to begin to do things that you've never done before. You've got to work that thing. I remember when I first got saved, I saw miracles and blessings come into my life just like clockwork. And I can remember people getting jealous of me because I'd only been saved a short amount of time and I began to see mighty things take place. People couldn't believe that I'd only been saved just a few weeks and I picked up that Bible and began to preach the gospel. You see, I, it wasn't because I was good or it wasn't, wasn't because I was perfect, but I had the sense to work that thing. Tell somebody you've got to work it. Well, I just simply read what the Bible said. I put action with it. I just said if God said it, then I'm going to believe it and that's going to settle the issue. And I worked that thing. And let me say that our God is no respecter of persons. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. Am I preaching right in here? We've never had the money to do the things we've done here. But we've had the sense to put faith in action together. You only need a little bit of faith and then you've got to work that thing. See, I know you don't have the money for the down payment on that house. But by faith, get the kids in the car this afternoon. And begin to drive around the neighborhood that you think is where God's taking you. I'm talking about making plans. Pay your tithes. Give your offerings to the Lord. And begin to work that thing. Tell somebody you got to work it. Oh, you see, I, I know I can't afford a house, but I'm going to believe for God to get me a better job. I, I know I don't have the down payment, but I'm going to give God what I have, believing for him to give me what he has. And today we're spending more money on missions and homeless housing and food ministries than we ever have before because we used our faith to get all of this paid for so we could do other things and more for God. And if you're believing to own a house that's debt free, then you've got to put action with your faith. You just can't say, well, I'm going to put in my $10 and I'm just going to believe for God to pay off my house. That's not the way he works. Probably one thing you might want to do is refinance your home for 15 years rather than 30. And then begin to double up on your payments. And begin to work that thing until you get it paid off. Because faith without works is dead. You're never going to get out of debt by just praying. Oh, I believe in praying. But you got to put action with your prayer. You're never going to get out of debt by just believing. you got to plant some seed. And you got to work hard. And you got to set yourself a budget. you got to establish some goals. And then you got to... You got to work that thing. 
faith by itself won't bring you a miracle. We all know people that had faith in God, but they died anyhow. Faith is one thing and acting upon it is another. Can I get some help in here? If a man is dying of thirst, he has to pick up a glass of water and he has to drink it. He can have the faith for the water to save him, but unless he drinks it, he's going to die. Some people say they have the faith for God to bring them a better job, but you've got to plant some seed by faith. You've got to pass out some resumes by faith. You've got to put action with your faith. Tell somebody, work that thing. Oh, I believe in praying. I believe in waiting on God for renewed strength. I believe that God can do things for us that we can't do for ourselves. But at some point, you've got to put action with your faith. At some point, you've got to work it. You can believe that God has called you into the ministry, but unless you do something about it, nothing's going to change. Unless you begin to make preparations, get involved in the school of ministry, begin to get into the Bible college, nothing's going to change. Get involved. Find a place in this church to get involved. Go to the prisons. Go to the jails. Well, I wish the pastor would let me preach in that pulpit. Let me tell you, the pastor's not going to give you this microphone. You go to the... You go to the prisons, you go to the jails, you go to the nursing homes, you work that thing, and God will cause you to rise to the top. How many of you know that you can't steer a parked car? I mean, I can sit in my car and I can steer that thing all day long. But unless I get in and begin to put some action with that thing... How many know what I'm talking about? You gotta put action with it. Whoa. Lord, help this. Everybody say, Lord, help that white man. You gotta put action with it. Somebody needs to fix the brakes on this thing. But what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, you gotta work it. Everybody say, work that thing. You keep sitting in the pew saying, oh, God, show me what you want me to do. Oh, God, show me the place you have for me. Oh, God, show me my ministry. Oh, shut up and go to work. Go to the jails. Go to the prisons. Get involved. Start working that thing. Tell three people, work that thing. Miracles don't just happen. They happen for those that come into agreement. And then they work it, baby. They work it. Some people think that faith is an overwhelming feeling that overcomes them. But I can tell you from personal experience, I've never had giant faith to do what I've done. And let me say this. You don't have to be super spiritual to get it done either. And just because you act holier than now, you haven't fooled anybody, baby. And God doesn't move because you're super spiritual. He moves because you use your faith. And then you act on your faith. And you have the determination to work that thing. And to get out of that boat and begin to walk by faith. That's who God does it for. Can I get a good hallelujah in here? See, Bible faith is nothing more than a determination to stand on the word of God no matter how you feel. I said you can't go by what your emotions tell you. Unless it lines up with the word. Jesus said, thy word is truth. In other words, the facts may say that you can't do it. The facts may say you can't own your own home. The facts may say you're not going to get healed. The facts may say that all is lost and your life is over. But what does the truth say? Your mind says you're sick and you can't get well. But the truth says that by his stripes ye were healed. In other words, it's already done. It's my job to stand on what God said, say what God said, and stand on that word no matter how I feel. Now, I'm not denying that I don't have a problem. I'm just saying the problem can't exist because of the power that's in the word. Your emotions may say that your children are lost and going to hell. But Bible, but Bible faith says that if I'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that me and my house shall be saved. So I don't go by the facts. I go by the truth. If you're believing God for a turnaround in your finances, you've got to put action with your faith. 
If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to have the same results in your life. You have to give financially when you don't want to. you got to work that thing when you don't feel like it. If you're believing God, you're on your own house, then you've got to put God first and do something to clean up your credit one item by another. Tell somebody, you've got to work that thing. How many know that having faith in the Lord will go against all your senses? That's why you can't go by feelings. Your feelings don't always tell you the truth. Your feelings will tell you that you can't afford to tithe. But God says if you'll bring in the tithe and offering, He'll open the windows of heaven for you. That doesn't mean it's going to happen today. It just means it's eventually going to take place in your life. Your feelings will tell you that somebody's hurt you and you better go ahead and get even with them. Your feelings say that if you'll forgive them, that they'll just go ahead and do it again. But you can't go by how you feel. Because if you go by how you feel, you're going to end up being turned over to the tormentors before it's over. The Word of God says that if you don't release others, God won't release, you, won't, won't release you. In other words, whatever you hold against others, God will hold against you. The way you treat others is the way God treats you. Maybe that's why you're in the mess you're in. And let me tell you this. You know, many times you hear me talk about forgiveness. And I, and I say, now, if you know you need to forgive somebody, come up here, raise your hand, come up here, stand up here, and we pray together. That is faith. But let me tell you what action is. Action is going to the person that you hate and putting your arm around them and saying, I love you. You've got to put faith and action together. If you try to forgive somebody but can't, it's because you've only gone into half of the equation. You've got faith, but you don't have action to put with it. Sometimes you've got to take somebody to lunch that you just don't even want to talk to. Sometimes you've got to put your arm around somebody you've got a problem with. Tell two people, you have to work that thing. You've got to work that thing. If society's been unfair to you, you've got to let it go. There are breakthroughs. That you're never going to receive until you put action with your faith. Like forgiving the white man. Or the black man. Or your ex-husband. Or your parents. Or your boss. Am I preaching right in here? See, whether you like it or not, there are some prayers that God's not going to answer until you forgive people and let it go. There are some prayers that God cannot answer until you start giving your finances to Him. If you always go by how you feel, you're going to end up destroyed. Because Satan will use your feelings to lie to you. He'll use your feelings to control you. If you're going to make it in these last days, you're going to have to follow God's Word and not your emotions. There are people listening right now that God's told to help us with our television ministry and you don't do it because you don't want to or you don't feel like it. But I'm telling you that your miracle is tied to your action. God's already told you not to date unbelievers but you wouldn't listen so now you're in a big mess. He told you not to go into business with somebody that didn't believe like you do, and you did, and now you're in a mess. I don't know why God didn't deliver me. He told you what to do, and you wouldn't listen. If you feel that God told you to start your own business, it begins by putting him first and then preparing properly. Get yourself a briefcase. Plan a strategy. Put action with your faith. You know that God told you to write a book. you got to get up and start writing. He didn't tell you it was going to be published. He said, get up and write it. Tell somebody, work that thing. Jesus came to the disciples walking on the water, and Peter saw him, and his faith rose. And Peter said, Lord, if that's you, command me to come to you on the water. But you see, faith wasn't enough. He had not only to listen, but he had to get out of that boat. Just because you have faith doesn't mean it's going to happen. You got to get out of the boat and begin to work that thing. If you have a desire to sing in the choir but have a lousy voice. (laughs) 
you got to get out of the boat and take some voice lessons and begin to practice and keep on practicing until something changes. Oh, how many know what I'm talking about? Get out of the boat and begin to work that thing. When people are filled with doubt and unbelief, they hope that God will do something for them. Quit hoping and use your faith and get out of that boat and begin to work that thing. The woman with the issue of blood was sick and she was dying, but she had faith in the Lord. But faith by itself wouldn't have gotten her healed. She had to press through every obstacle that was around her. She had to press through all of the doubt and the unbelief and the discouragement and everything that was against her. She had to press through it all. See, we have healing services here and people stay home because they don't feel good enough to come to church. What's wrong with this picture? Some people say they believe in Jesus as their healer. But if you don't press in with your faith, nothing's going to happen. Let me tell you, when a deacon lays hands on you and you're sick, release your faith right then and begin to do something you couldn't do before. If you couldn't move your hand, begin to move your hand. If you can't move your whole hand, move one finger. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about work that thing. You're never going to see any changes in your marriage until you get some counseling and press in with your faith. You're never going to see any changes in your marriage until you start reading books and getting information, finding out what God says about it, and forgiving each other and putting your arms around one another and saying, I love you, even when you don't feel like it. You're never going to find your destiny by just having faith. You got to get up and do something. I'm talking about teaching a Sunday school class. Go under the nursing homes. Tell somebody you got to work that thing. Hallelujah. Quit trying to have faith and put action with your faith. Make up your mind that God's word is true and then work it. God told the children of Israel that the promised land belonged to them, but they also said, he said, you're going to have to get up and you're going to have to fight for your miracle. See, healing is yours, but you're going to have to fight for it. Prosperity is yours, but you're going to have to fight for it. See, God responds to a fighter because it's faith and action together. Becky Fender went to the doctor because they found a tumor growing behind her eye. And she began to stand on the word of God for healing. One night she was in church and she began to praise God. And she began to thank him for her healing. In the natural, nothing changed. But she kept on praising God. It was an act of faith. She worked that thing. And her healing came. The devil lied to her and said that she wasn't healed. But she was. See, sometimes when I praise the Lord, it's not praise at all. Sometimes it's nothing more than me putting action with my faith. Sometimes you got to praise the Lord for months before you see anything change. Sometimes you got to plant the seed and then water the seed and then wait for God to bring the increase. See, I'm talking about putting action with your faith. I'm talking about working it until something begins to move. You got to work that thing until God is touched by your faith. You can tell me you have faith. But I'm going to show you my faith by my works and by my action. It's been said that praise is the language of faith. In other words, anybody can praise God when everything is going nice and smooth. But God wants to know if you'll put action with your faith. See, sometimes my dance isn't a dance at all. Sometimes it's nothing more than me working my faith. Sometimes my shout is not a shout at all. Sometimes it's nothing more than me working that shout, working that thing in my life. You're never going to get out of depression in your life until you slip on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What am I talking about? I'm talking about faith and action. you got to work that thing. There was a certain woman whose husband had died, and she asked God what to do. She asked she asked the man of God, what should I do? And the man of God said, do you have anything in the house? And she said, oh, yes, I've got a little bit of oil. He said, get the oil, but go borrow some vessels. And then once you have the vessels, begin to pour the oil into the vessels. What was she doing? She was working that thing. You see, you've got to take what you have and begin to work that thing. Moses had a staff. It wasn't much, but he threw it down and it ate up the snake of the other. What am I saying? You gotta work that thing. You gotta take what you already have and you gotta work it. 
you got to make up your mind. God's spoken to you, and you're going to get out of the boat. You're going to make up your mind. You're going to walk and keep on walking. Yes, you've got faith, but faith alone won't bring you a miracle. you got to work that thing. Stand to your feet. Give three people a high five and say, work that thing. Work that thing. Oh, yes, I'm in the boat. But I gotta get out of the boat and I gotta begin to work it. Oh yes, I've got faith for a turnaround in my finances. But I've gotta give and I gotta work it. Yes, I've got faith for my marriage to be turned around. But I'm gonna get some counseling. I'm gonna read some books. I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to work that thing. Work that thing. Work that thing. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me now. Father, we thank you for this word. Lord, my prayer is that not one person leaves this place the same. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, your word said that if we are good ground, that we can produce a hundredfold return. God, there's some people here that aren't as good a ground as they should be, but they can get a thirtyfold return. Lord, I thank you for revelation knowledge. I'm working our faith for revelation knowledge. In Jesus' name. With your heads bowed, how many are here today? And you can say, Pastor, being here has touched my life, and I know my life isn't right with God. If that's you, raise your hands high all over this room, upstairs and downstairs all over this room. God bless you. How many are here today? And you can say, Pastor, I'm in a situation and I need God's help. And I've got faith. But I need the strength to work that thing. If that's you, let me see your hands all over this room. If you raised your hand for whatever reason, I want you to get out of your seating areas right now and come and stand here in the front. Come and stand here in the front. Move. This is part of working that thing. This is part of putting action with your faith. Let's give God a praise here this morning. Let's give him a praise. If we'll praise our God, they'll come right now. Up in the balcony, if we'll praise our God, they'll come. If we'll praise him, they'll come. Hallelujah. Faith in action, faith in action, faith in action. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up as close as you can. Come on up, come on up, come on up. Hallelujah. The service has not been dismissed, so please do not leave. Please do not leave. We don't want to disturb anybody around us that God is talking to them, moving in their hearts. Hallelujah. Faith and action. Faith and action. Here's what the devil will tell you. He'll say, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. But God doesn't do it because you're good enough. He does it because you trusted in him and you put action with your faith. Raise your hands to the Lord all over this room right now, all over this room. There's some real revelation in this room today. Something's going to happen in this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, Dear Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I'm sorry for my sin. I cannot save myself, but I believe in you. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for raising me up. I thank you for faith. I do have faith in you. But I also am determined to put action with my faith. You can't steer a parked car. I'm through sitting. I'm going to get up and work that thing. Yes, I'm in the boat. But you've spoken to me. And now I'm going to get out of the boat. And I'm going to begin to walk by faith. I'm putting action with my faith. 
Faith by itself isn't enough. I have to put action with my faith. I know you've spoken to me. I will mix faith with action. And God will bring the results. In Jesus' name. My life is yours. And I give you praise. Now I want you to praise him right now like it's done. Praise him like it's already done. Praise him like it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Give three people a hug and tell them work that thing. I'll see you Wednesday night.